Hey friends, if you're new around here, my name is Megan. My family and I have an off-grid homestead in South Carolina where we are learning to get back to our roots, live a more simple lifestyle, and turn raw land into a functioning off-grid homestead. When many people are getting started on their homestead journey, the first animal they bring home are chickens. We started with meat rabbits because one of the things that held us up on chickens was how do we brood them off the grid? We're not gonna be able to use heat plates or heat lamps to brood our chickens. How do we keep them warm? I started researching this topic and I come across a method that was vaguely mentioned in a few blogs about cold brooding. And I went to YouTube and found a few videos on cold brooding or off-grid brooding your chicks but the knowledge really isn't out there on how it should be done. And there were no step-by-step -step guides on how I went about this process. And so it basically became an experiment for us. We ordered our chicks from Murray McMurray Hatchery. We got our first batch in. We had a few issues in shipping. Oh my gosh, if y'all haven't seen that video, I will link it down below. But basically the USPS lost a box of chicks. And then we had those chicks resent to us by Murray McMurray. And they sent out a replacement chicks on Wednesday. Thursday come, no chicks. Friday come, no chicks. Saturday come, no chicks. Sunday, the post office is closed. Monday morning, the post office called me and told me my chicks had arrived, but they were all dead. They had sat in the post office all weekend, so I had to go pick up a box of dead chicks. I called Murray McMurray and they wanted to resend out the chicks all over again, but I was like, no, I don't see that it's going to be any different if we do it all over again. So instead, can I just have a refund? Murray McMurray refunded our money and we went to the feed store to get our chicks for this experiment. So these are the chicks we got from our local feed store. I've got six Rhode Island Reds, four Americanas, and four Black Sex Links. Now, I do want to say before y'all watch this video, I have already successfully off-grid brooded chicks through this off-grid brooder. We started with 42 chicks in our first brooding batch, and we lost two of the original 42. One got wedged between a feeder and the wall. We quit using those feeders after that because it wasn't worth the rest of me. We just pour their feet on the ground. And then the second one got stepped on. Our other chick losses we had during that batch were due to the shipping delays, our chicks not getting it to us. And in the end, every single chick that got lost in the mail did end up dying regardless of what we did to save them. It was, it was awful. I'm just saying it was awful. But that's not what this video is about. I just wanted to get that out there to say to y'all that even though this batch of chicks come from our local feed store, we have successfully done this with chicks we received in the mail that made it to us on time. They did great. So whether you are mail ordering chicks or getting them from the feed store, as long as they are healthy to start out with, they will do good in this method if you follow a few guidelines. And I'm gonna share all of those guidelines with you at the end, just so you have them all, and I'll kinda of go over them as we go. So the first thing you do when you get your chicks home, you wanna take jugs. I prefer a empty Folgers can, a tall one, but I have used an animal cracker container that was left over, really any kind of thick plastic jug that will hold water and not melt with hot water in it will work great. I take and heat my hot water up and put that in my jug. Now you're also going to need an insulated hen house. And in the video that shows how I built our off-grid brooder, it shows me go through and make two insulated hen houses. So make sure you're watching that video. Now the thing I chose to change from that group of chicks to this group of chicks is that instead of doing two hen houses, I expanded it and made one big hen house. The reason is I found out with our first group of chicks that I would literally have to go through after dark and separate the chicks out into the separate boxes because they wanted to all pile into one box, which means you have the higher chance of chicks getting stepped on, which is how we lost the chick that got stepped on. If you're doing two separate boxes, I suggest separating them out. Let's talk group size for chicks. This second batch of chicks, I did 14 chicks with. The first batch of chicks was 42 chicks. I figured out that it's really a happy medium to do between 20 
and 12 chicks in one hen house box. And if you're gonna do two hen house boxes, then you need to divide your brooders so they're actually separate brooders in the same form or just completely separate brooders, whatever. But try not to do over 20 because then you have a higher chance of your chicks getting trampled. Now, why 12? Because this method highly relies on body heat from your chicks, you need enough chicks to really produce that body heat. We got 14 chicks and they done great in this method. And as you see what we go through, you'll see how our chick numbers ended up. And while I'm suggesting 12 at least is to keep them nice and warm. Okay, so you go get your chicks, whether they're coming from the feed store, whether they're coming through the mail, you have your chicks. You get your hot water jugs heated up. Put that hot water jug inside of your hen house. Now you've got your water and your chicken feed and a little bit of honey into this warm water and I let it mix together and set for at least 24 hours. And that way it kind of gives them a boost of antibiotics from the garlic, a little boost of sugar to get their bodies going from the honey and a little bit of probiotics from the apple cider vinegar in their water. Okay, so you get your chicks home. The first thing you're gonna do, take your chicks and dip their beak into the water, let them get a drink, dip your chicks beak into the food, let them get a taste, and then put each chick into the hen box where that hot water jug is, put them up against the hot water jug so that they can feel the warmth and they can recognize that there is warmth there when they are cold. Now you're gonna do this method for each and every chick you bought. That way they know where water is, they know where food is, and they know where warmth is. Now we do ferment our chicken feed, but for the first day we do dry feed just so it's easier on the new chicks when you're trying to get everybody situated for them to find the dry feed and eat it. It just works out easier for us. So that's what we do, and then we'll start fermented feed on day two or day three, just depending on when I got the fermented feed going. I usually start it after the chicks have arrived. Okay, you get that all, you get them all in there, all in their warm hen box. You let them know where it's at, give them a little bit of break to explore their surroundings and get used to it. But the first few days are gonna be a little tiring, and I'm just putting it out there. You're going to want to refresh that hot water every four hours those first few days. I just take the jug out, pour the hot water into a pan and heat it back up and then put it back into the jug and stick the jug right back into the hen house. And every time I do that, I pick the chicks up and put them around that hot water jug for the first two days to help them really know, hey, there's heat in here. And so here is the footage from our first few days so you can see firsthand how this went with our chicks. Currently in their brooder box, it is 75 degrees. All right, so at eight o'clock, I will come back out here. See, they're all huddled over here, not in their box. So I'll get their Folgers can, bring it out, and stick everybody in the box to huddle together. And they're all huddled up back there. So 63 degrees in here. Oh, we're all a lot awake. Crowded around in there. Temperature inside is 50 degrees. Already out this morning looking for some food. Everybody is out of the box. 59 degrees in the box. Okay, see how this guy right here? He was the one that was off by himself yesterday. He's off by himself today. That means that I need to be worried about him. He's sitting there cheaping his eyes aren't fully open that means he is not in a good shape and he was that way when we put him in here yesterday so i don't know what it is his body is warm when you're when your chickens are too cold they will you they will feel cold so he's warm give him some water or i should say she these are all pullets if he doesn't perk up soon i will take some water and some food and mix it together and syringe feed him Oh, yeah. Are you thirsty? Alright, so currently we are looking at 77 degrees. Back there in the back is our little sick friend. She's sitting up. She's cheeping. 
So I'm hopeful. And so all, right. all of our chicks are in the box. It is 79 degrees in the box. Their can is still very, very yeah. warm. Okay, so here's our sick little chick. Look at it. It has been up. It has been walking around with the other chicks. As you can see, these are out here running around. No issue with it being 74 degrees. I got it. Oh. Alright guys, we will see y'all at the 4 o'clock check-in. Say goodnight. Daddy's cuddled up in the back. This is saying 61 degrees. So it definitely cooled off. And everybody is out and running around it looks like. Currently, we're reading 68 degrees inside of the box. Cheeks, is everybody okay in there? Currently, it says they are 79 degrees in there. Let's get our bucket out. Oh, there's our little one that hasn't been doing the best. Pretty sure it's the same one that was weak yesterday, still kind of weak today. Okay, go, go, go. I put sticks in here. Oh, you put sticks in there? Yeah. All right, babies. Let me get y'all some warm water. All right, everybody looks to be doing okay. This is our one that's been needing a little extra care, but still hanging in there. Still hanging in there. It is time for our 12 o'clock check-in. You will notice you missed the four and eight. But it's been raining all day. I've got the awning out on the RV so we can actually sit outside. It's still sprinkling off and on. I do have some sad news to report though. The little chick that I had been nursing for the past few days did not make it this morning. I continuously had to syringe feed it water and give it a little food like by hand every four hours. I never seen it eat or drink on its own ever. It just always seemed a little weaker. From the get-go, it's always just been the weakest chick we've had. So that's our first loss in our off-grid breeder of 14 chicks. We're on, we've just completed day three, so we're on day four now. And that's the only chick we've lost so far. It sucks. I was really hoping that one would make a come around since it had lasted so long, even though it had been so weak. But, you know, things are what they are sometimes, and that one was just too weak to keep going. Okay, so after the first three days, you have changed that hot water every four hours around the clock. Unless your temperature is really hot outside, like 70 and above, then I just wouldn't even worry about the hot water being able to change every four hours. I would just do it when it gets colder than 70 degrees. That's just me. But those first three days are your really, really crucial days. You're going to notice in those first three days, any chicks that look a little sick. Any chicks that are off by themselves, they're staring off against the wall, ignoring the other chick. Their cheep sounds a little too loud. Think the squeaky wheel gets the oil. So if you notice a chick that is a little squeaky or is out of place, you need to give it a little extra tender love and care. Now, if you've made it past the first few days with no sickly chicks, great. If they're sick within the first 72 hours, I would say it's probably travel it's probably transition it's probably you know something that went on before you got that check or something that happened during transition and getting them to your brooder that's causing them to be a little sick after that first three days if anything happens to your chicks and you lose a check that you know did not notice being sick in those first three days then it's something with your brooder so for the first little bit just keep your brooder smaller pay close attention to your chicks and see how they're doing that, guys, is going to be your saving grace in off-grid brooding chicks. You have to pay attention to your chicks. If they huddle together, they're too cold, pick them up, put them next to the heater. Okay? If they're running around, cheaping, they're fine. If one, one chick is cheaping very loudly, something's wrong with that chick. If one chick is off by itself, something's wrong with that chick. You just need to look at them and check on them. And changing your hot water every four hours really gives you that visual cue that, hey, I need to check on my chicks. But those first three days go by quickly and they're a small price to pay to be able to have chickens and meat chickens and layer chickens or whatever you need for your family on your homestead. So 
So we get for, through the first three days and then we're gonna start slacking off on our hot water. So for the next four days, we're going to change our hot water every six hours. That's a little bit of a break, but I should say every six hours ish because I like my sleep. I kind of changed it up a little bit. So at night I would change it at eight and then, you know, I really shouldn't change it again until what two. I instead changed it at midnight. So I basically would just stay up till midnight or kind of doze out on my couch until midnight. And then I would heat up their water and go to bed and not change it again until 6 a.m. And so I changed it at 8, I changed it at midnight, I changed it at 6 a.m. And then I changed it at 12 at noon and then 8 in the evening. So it wasn't quite every 6 hours. They had one 8 hour period and one 4 hour period. But I just say every 6 hours for the ease of understanding. We're going from 4 to 6 hours. We're slowing it down on our hot water and make that fit your life however you do your sleep schedule make it work for you just try to keep it around every six hours for those next four days and of course it's going to depend on your temperatures and your location now if we're expecting 30 degree temperatures i would go ahead and do a four hour check overnight where i'm doing 30 degree temperatures and go ahead and just reheat it then if the chicks look like they need it but if you're not doing freezing temperatures every six hours should be fine at that point in time. If for any reason your chicks look like they're too cold, your hot water seems to be cooling down too fast, always go back to the every four hours. Again, you need to pay attention to your chicks and your brooder and make it work for your life. This is what worked for hours. And our chicks have been through several 30 degree nights all throughout this process. So I don't want y'all to think just because we're in South Carolina, we have very warm temperatures. This is what's happened. Okay, so we are, we are getting cold at night and warm during the day. That's just how it is for spring. After those four, four days, then you're into your second week of having these chicks on your homestead. You're gonna move it back to every eight hours hot water changing for the next few days. And if it is staying cold where you are, go ahead and do that for the next week. And this is the schedule I follow. So I do hot water changes in morning, in the afternoon, and before I go to bed. So I'm just being honest with y'all guys. If that temperature is 70 degrees outside during the daytime, I don't even worry about changing it in the morning. If it is 65, I will change it in the morning and not change it again till the night. If it is 60 outside during the day, then I will go ahead and change it in the morning, afternoon, and at night. And if it's below 60, I'm obviously going to change it in the morning, afternoon, and at night. If it is really cold where you're at and you're having like 40 degrees outside temperatures during the daytime, go ahead and change it every four hours if you're awake and around the homestead. Go ahead and do it just to keep them a little warmer. It's fine. You can't change it too much. You just got to pay attention to your chicks, okay? So what I do, especially for the first two weeks, is when I walk by those chicks, I peek in at them. Are they huddled? Okay, maybe they're a little cold. Fill the water. Is it cold? Then I heat it up. If they're spread out running around, I don't bother with them. If they're in their hen box and they're not huddled together in a corner, I don't bother with them. If they're in their hen box and they're all huddled in the corner, they're cold. Look at your water, doesn't need to be heated up. Go ahead and heat it. So you really gotta pay attention to your chicks. I'm just giving you the guidelines that we have went by that have worked really, really well for us. Okay, so we are like day 10, day 11. This is where you're really, really gonna start slacking off on your chicks as long as your outside temperatures will permit. So if you are, say, 60 degrees and above during the daytime and 50 degrees and above at nighttime, quit changing out your hot water. Your chicks have learned to huddle. They know where their hen box is. They should be okay for now. If you are dropping below 50 degrees at night, go ahead and heat up their water before bedtime and again in the morning when you get up. If you are below 60 degrees in the daytime, go ahead and heat their water up in the morning and in the afternoon to kind of get them through the rest of the week. But if you are like us and you have 70 degrees above day, 60 degree above days, and warmer nights that are 50 degrees and above, stop. Don't heat up their water anymore. Leave their hen house in there because they have learned to huddle for heat at this point. So that's what we've done. After they've been about two and a half weeks in your off-grid brooder, I take the hen house out. 
our brooder is still sealed off from air flow you know they're not really getting a whole lot of airflow but i'm slowly transitioning them to going without so at two and a half weeks i take the hen house out I leave them in the brooder they're good to go at three weeks they go out to the tractor our three week old chicks had some like 30 degree nights out there in the chicken tractor so we did prop some stuff up on the sides to give them a windbreak to give them a place to huddle that was a little warmer go for it do that so our first batch of chicks that went through our cold breeder are now four weeks old in the chicken tractors and we really don't do much for them at all other than feed them and move their tractor let's go check out our two and a half week old chicks that are still in our chicken brooder they have no hen house they haven't for a few days let's go peek at them see how they're doing oh before we go and check out these chicks i wanted to make it very clear off-grid brooding your chicks called brooding them will make them get their feathers much much faster by two weeks they have wing feathers that are almost fully feathered out by three weeks they are almost completely feathered out and our four week old chicks are very very feathered out like almost like little adult chicks so be prepared for that because they start flying very very early by two weeks almost all of our chicks and our brooder can fly hey guys so these guys right here are two and a half weeks old and as you can see they are very 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 feathered out there is the entire brooder guys and as y'all can see there is no heat plate there is no heat lamp there is no hot water jugs there is no mother hen house there is just chickens and their water and they get their feed on the ground and they are happy and they are healthy and they are growing like little weeds two and a half weeks old guys and this is what our chickens look like so these guys right here are proof off-grid brooding chicks works so if you're an off-grid family like us who is looking for a way to be able to brood chicks i highly recommend this for y'all if you're not an off-grid family and you just want to save on power i highly recommend this for y'all if you live in the frigid north where you're thinking these temperatures won't allow it keep your chicks inside you can control their temperatures inside a lot easier that way and after you get them past the first three days of needing that warmth from the hot water bottle they can basically self-regulate and you can only change their water you know in the morning and at night and then slow down not even do that that would be so much easier if we had space in our rv we would have done that because then i wouldn't have to be getting up and doing it so much so if you're looking for a way to off-grid brood chicks this has worked for us again i'm going to put all of the information on how we did our timetables and everything right here on the screen i will also put it in the description box below that way you can see what i'm talking about have it written out you can see every four hours for the first few days you change their water every six ish hours for the next few days when you change their water what temperatures you need for inside and outside to kind of slack off on those water changes how you do the week after that and then when you should move them you know to your chicken tractors and stuff like that it's all written out for you guys so i hope you've enjoyed this experiment and it gives you a little more confidence to look to the old ways how they used to do things with all this technology and know that you can do it too times may have changed but that doesn't mean our techniques have to if they've worked they can still work so go out get your chicks give this off-grid brooder a chance and let me know if you've had success with it don't forget to subscribe to the channel turn your notification on so you can see more about how we live this life off-grid so for now friends we will see y'all later bye